This video is designed for beginners. Um, most of us are beginners actually on ChatGPT, but today I wanna to make an introduction to what ChatGPT is, how it works, and how we can get the most out of it. I'm gonna give you some ideas of how we use it. I've been making videos for bloggers and giving um, some really cool strategies, but I really wanna show you today slower and give you a better understanding as to what the tool actually is. Now, right now, ChatGPT is free. And what it is, if you're here, you've probably already heard about it. It's basically a um, platform that allows us to chat digitally with a robot that has learned massive amounts of text and is able to return it to us in uh, tables and charts and answers and uh, recipes and action plans and timelines and templates and all kinds of wonderful things. Now, a lot of people are going to be using this for school, obviously, that's something the schools are gonna have to, to, have to deal with. Um, developers are using it for coding. It actually co creates code and people are using it to create job resumes and emails and like I'm using it for blogs and websites and sales funnels and social posts and all kinds of things. Um, this is ChatGPT. You can go to chat.openai.com. So it was created by OpenAI, chat.openai.com. GPT has been around for a little while and it's basically um, a, a large language platform, like I said, that has learned all this text. Lots of different tools are using the GPT models but this one specifically is using chat. And we are gonna see this roll out across all kinds of other platforms and be integrated with lots of our favorite tools. Those of you that follow me already that are using Jasper, we've been using Jasper for a, a year or two now. Um, it Chat is now part of Jasper. Chat is now part of Phrase. A lot of those AI tools that we've been using, there's now a chat element inside of those. But for those of you just getting started and want to take a look at it, this is for you. Now, I am a six-figure blogger. I blog full-time and I monetize my blogs through affiliate marketing, um, ad revenue, uh, display ads on my website. Those are two primary uh, sources and sponsorships. And so I'm in here every day, all day creating content. And so I've been playing with chat GPT, but I am not getting rid of Jasper, my AI tool, um, or any of my other tools right now. I'm actually using them together. But today let's take a look at what chat GPT can do. So when you first log in, you're going to see some disclaimers on there. It's going to tell you what it does and what it doesn't do. You'll also notice when you start to chat with it, it's going to answer you and tell you, I'm just a computer, I can't do that. Or here's a better way to instruct me to do this. But I'm gonna give you the biggest tip I could possibly give anybody right now that's using ChatGPT. And that tip is this, ask it how to communicate. Ask it straight out how to work with it, okay? So let's start with something like that. Okay, let's just say that you are a food blogger and you want to create recipes. Well, you can come right in here and ask it, can you create recipes? And now it's going to answer us. Yes, I can create recipes. Would you like me to generate a recipe for a specific dish? Now you can say something like, I have hamburger, mustard, um, lettuce, and baked beans. What can I make? And now it's going to give us a recipe for hamburger bean casserole. Okay, this is going to be absolutely uh, amazing for everybody in the kitchen that needs a recipe. The other day I pulled up, what was my example before? Um, French toast, some sort of French toast recipe that I was pulling up and I was able to use chat to do that. So if you're a food blogger and you want to create some original recipes, 
you can uh, you can work with chat gpt to create those now i'm going to click stop generating here and now watch this you could do something like um um give me a recipe for a um for cheesecake okay now it'll give you a, re a recipe for cheesecake now you can let it finish giving you the full recipe but I'm gonna stop it so I can show you something cool right here. Now you can say, make it keto. And it'll give you a keto recipe for cheesecake. So it'll, it knows what keto is. It scanned uh, massive amounts of text up through 2021. So up until that scan, it understands language that was being used up until then. And it's constantly being updated. It was, I think, 2020 and then 2000, and now it's 2021. So anything that happened in 2022, it's not going to have specific knowledge on that. Also, if you ask it numbers and dates and things like that, it gets real squirrely. It'll spit out information that's not factual. That's all AI. So you have to be careful. But I can tell you right now that I, being a um, certified keto coach, that the items on this list are keto friendly and I've made keto cheesecake a lot and this looks pretty darn good. Now you could also change this now, make it paleo, make it gluten free. Um, so does it say up there, okay, now we need to, it doesn't say how many people this was for or how many servings that I can see. So I might have to ask it, how many servings is this? Now, the re I'm sh what I'm showing you right now, and I know I've used the recipe dialogue before in my videos, but what I'm showing you now is the communication piece that is, I think what a lot of these videos that we're watching on Chat GPT, they show you all these killer prompts and all these amazing ways to get code out of it. But beginners, the most important thing that you could possibly learn is how to communicate, okay? So what I'm showing you here is that it's just everyday dialogue. You do not have to put in formal prompts. Talk to it, ask it questions, tell it what to do. So it says this recipe makes eight to 12 servings. Now watch this. How can I make it for two people? Let's see if it adjusts the recipe. So it's saying have by having the ingredients amounts, there it goes, here's an adjusted re recipe for a two serving keto cheesecake. So it adjusted the recipe for us. Now, is it factual? I don't know. I haven't gone through and made the recipe. So my suggestion is before you go out printing these things, if you're a food blogger, you might wanna spin a recipe out or two and see how close it's coming. Or if you're if you go look at the full recipe, you can cross check it and say, oh, that does look like it would be um, two servings, probably based on what's in the recipe. Okay, so this is an example. Now you can ask it questions. How long is cheesecake good in the fridge for? Properly stored, a cheesecake will last about four to five days in the refrigerator. Now it tells you how to take care of the cheesecake. Should be wrapped tightly with plastic wrap or aluminum foil and stored in an airtight container in the refrigerator. It's also important to note that homemade cheesecake should be consumed. Okay, so they're putting a disclaimer. Now here's an example. The other day I was, I'm trying to get strawberries to last longer in my refrigerator. How can I get strawberries to last longer in my fridge? Now, if you're a blogger, you can take these answers and you can move them. You can copy and move this over to an editor that you're going to use. I caution you about just letting the, um, especially this specific one, ChatGPT, just write a blog for you straight out without any guidance or coaching or questions. Because what happens is if everybody in there is just typing in, how do you keep strawberries good? And everybody's posting the same list, even though there will be variations, it's going to be all basically duplicate content across the web. And then there's going to be nothing special about yours. So I'm, I'm really shaping mine and, and going in there and asking questions and guiding it and stitching the answers together the way I want them to. Um, so it gives you some ideas. It doesn't say anything about the one that I was thinking, 
What about a mason jar? Oh, wait, you can do this. Are there more? This is one of my favorite questions. Are there more or is there more? Because you think, oh, it gave you a list of six, so that must be all there are. It stops at a certain point. So you can keep asking it, is there more? Is there more? Is there something else? Especially when you're making like a list style post or something like that, okay? Um, so it didn't give me the one I was hoping it would give me that I, I think I saw on TikTok. I think my brother saw it on TikTok. What about a mason jar? Storing strawberries in a mason jar can be a great way to keep them fresh. Here's how to do it. So now you could go create a blog about how to keep strawberries fresh. Now, I'm, I'm totally winging this here, which is the way I like to make my videos because you can see the creative process in its real form and, and get the thought process of how we guide it and ask us questions. Um, so here it gives us a list about the mason jar and you could go on further and have more conversation about strawberries and mason jars and fridge temperatures and all that. But this is just an example, okay? Now here's something important. When you're playing with ChatGPT, this entire dialogue, everything on the page, it is using for context. So if I now were to go start a new thought and ask it a question that's not related to food or strawberries or anything else, it could get confused. So what you wanna do is over here on the left, you wanna click new chat when you're gonna start a new train of thought. And then over here, you've got all these chats that you have been using um, the system. Be careful because this system is free right now. It's overloaded. It has had more signups. Um, I forget the exact stats, but uh, the more signups than any other platform within a certain amount of time. It's overloaded frequently. It times out. You can't get in. You're going to want to export those chats if you want to save them to um, somewhere else. And you can do that down here. Um, clear conversations, dark mode. If you click on... Let's see. Now that's interesting. I don't know where it went. At the bottom, show more. There was an export option. Maybe that's when I was playing with the playground. OpenAI also has a free playground. If you go to openai.com and register, you can actually use this playground where you play with this editor much more in depth and it must have been in there. Now, what I'm hearing people say is that pretty soon they're gonna be charging at least for that playground. Um, there already is an upgrade option in there, but there is like a chat GPT professional version coming and I think we're gonna get more use out of it. There's no working editor in here. You cannot edit, you're not gonna be making uh, putting in internal links. You're not going to be making things H2s and H3s, although the system will sometimes give you headings and subheadings. Um, you're going to be editing in another platform, which is another reason why I still use Jasper. And I like to work within heat chat and move things over to Jasper. And for those of you that are using Jasper, there is a chat um, module in here. And I thought they were both using the DaVinci language model, but the outputs are very different. I've got other videos on that. But so I like I like to use Jasper for a lot of things, but here's where I come back to Chat GPT all the time. One of my favorite uses for Chat GPT is to get it to provide me templates, formulas, tables, things like that. Okay. So um, let's go back to our recipe example for a second. I lost it. It's not, they're not in any particular order. So there's no organization over here, here happening. All right, we just go here again. So if I were to say, um, give me a recipe for cornbread and it were to give me a recipe. Okay, now if you're gonna go copy and paste this over into, for example, your food blog, you're probably going to um, put that in some sort of a recipe builder. Most people aren't just copying and pasting these straight anymore. We have like plugins that allow us to put in those recipes. But watch this. I haven't tried this with the recipe, but let's try this. Put it in a table. Let me see what it does. So this is exactly how you want to test 
the system. You want to communicate and oh, see what it gives you back. See what it gives you back. I thought I, I thought I saw that export over there on the left. So there it goes. So ingredients. Oh, look what it's giving us. It's like a shopping list. Cornmeal. You're going to need a cup of cornmeal. You're going to need a cup of all-purpose flour. One quarter cup. That's actually pretty cool. So what I found is if I copy that table and put it in a Google Sheet, if I copy this table and put it right over to WordPress, it doesn't, it doesn't perform well. But if I take that table and I put it on a Google Sheet and then put that into um, like a Gutenberg table on WordPress, for those of you that are using WordPress, it copies really well. So you'll have to test your editor that you're using how to do that. But look at that. That was actually really cool. So now, ooh, I didn't even think about that. Hold on. Give me a shopping list. Let's see what it does. Ah, that's going to happen all the time. Something went wrong. Please try reloading. So let's go ahead and regenerate the response. And sometimes I'm going to have to refresh it because it just times out. And then if I can find it over here, I'll come back to it. Okay, so cornbread recipe. Okay, so now we're going to do that again. We're going to say give us a shopping list as soon as it just puts... There we go. We got it. Okay, now give me a shopping list. I actually like my table version better. So it gives you a shopping list. Um, can you make that better? <laughs> Let's see what it does. Okay, that is better. Because now it actually gave us how much of each item we're going to need. So if you're buying something off the shelf. So that's kind of cool. Um, how long will it take me to make this? Depending on your skill level, specific recipe you're using. Oh, watch this. What if I don't have any eggs? If you don't have any eggs, you can substitute them with an egg replacement. Here are a few options. So I saw uh, somebody posted yesterday on, on Facebook because eggs are scarce right now or very expensive. They posted um, an infographic of... Re egg replacements. I had no idea this was a thing. I did not know that a quarter cup of unsweetened applesauce was an egg replacement. I never would have known. So if you're on top of the times and you know that eggs are an issue in your food blogger, this might be something you want to put in there are some replacements. Um, okay, so these are just some of the ideas here that we can work with. Okay, so now let's go to a new chat. Now, one of the things that I like to do a lot of is create blogs. And one thing that ChatGPT is really good at creating is lists. It does a good job with lists. It does a good job with examples. It does a phenomenal job with outlines, okay? So let's just say we want to create a blog today and we're going to, one thing we can do is we can ask ChatGPT to give us ideas, okay? So... Um, I'm a blogger in the digital marketing niche. What blog topics are popular? Or you can say, what blog topics can I, should I write on? So basically what it's going to give me now is it's going to give me all of these topics that are within the digital marketing niche. This is also a phenomenal way to build a topic cluster without paying for the fancy keyword tools. So if you're thinking to yourself, I want to cover as, as many um, topics as I can on one particular niche, you can use Jasper to give you those topics, okay? Um, so let's pick one of these um, influencer marketing. What are some topics for influencer marketing. This is actually a really grow, a good one in my lane that's growing right now is influencer marketing, so it makes sense. So some popular topics for influencer marketing include product reviews. So I might create a blog that's all about how to create product, how influencers can create product reviews. Um, lifestyle, so anything lifestyle, food, travel. So they're basically kind of giving us 
they're actually giving us more like content buckets right now than they are topic ideas. So these would all be like content buckets. Okay, so um, you might say, um, what kind, give me some blog topic ideas for an influencer, for influencer marketing. Ooh, good. These are nice. So the impact of influencer marketing on consumer purchasing decisions. Would you have ever even thought to write that blog just like out of your head? And and the titles that ChatGPT gives us are very creative. And if you want to, you can even push these titles further. So one of the ways you can direct ChatGPT is you can tell it, be more creative. Be smarter. <laughs> There's a bug in here. Um, write like a teacher. Um, make them sarcastic. Put numbers in there. Create scarcity. So I want you to really play with directing these to get the most out of that title. Okay. So let's just say we are going to pick this one. The impact of influencer marketing on consumer purchasing decisions. Okay. Now you can say... Um, write an outline for, whoops, hold on. Let's copy this, the impact, this one. Thought I copied just that one. Write an outline for Okay, so now it's gonna give us a step-by-step -step outline. I mean, this is like, start to finish blogging here. I mean, it's absolutely incredible if you if you shape it this way, right? This could be, you could do the same thing to build a course. You could do the same thing to create a series of YouTube videos that you're gonna post on YouTube. Um, TikTok videos, podcast topics, any of these things in the digital space, you can you can do this for, okay? Um, so here's your here's your outline. Definition of influencer marketing. Importance of understanding the impact of influencer marketing on, a consumer, on consumer purchasing decisions. Yada, yada, yada. Now, if you wanted to, you literally could say, great, write the blog. But this is the mistake that people are going to make. They're going to allow ChatGPT to write the entire blog without giving it tone of voice, without asking it to be more creative, use better adjectives, sound more intelligent, give more examples. So one of the things that I do when I'm shaping this is I'll take them paragraph by paragraph and I'll look at it as if I don't know the topic. And okay, so so I noticed already that it skipped the, he skipped the headlines, okay? So I would click Stop Generating. So up here, see where it says um, how influencers shape perceptions and attitudes. Oh no, it's still going. So first let us de define what we mean by influencer marketing. All right, so it's doing its thing. So you can let it continue or you can work with it one by one. So you could take that outline and you could even print that or open it in notepad or put it on your other screen so that you can see it. And now you can take it one by one and say, okay, what is the definition of influencer marketing? Now, here's something that I absolutely love to do. This is a little bit more of an advanced blogging strategy, but not a hard one. I would go over here to Google. Let me just get, get rid of my pet shopping here. I would go over here to Google and I would type in, what is influencer marketing? And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna find these people also ask questions. And I wanna make sure that in that article, I'm answering any pertinent questions over here that would be relative to that, um, to that blog. So I could come over here and I could ask, okay, so how do I become an influencer marketer? So watch this, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, how do I become an influencer marketer. All right, so it gives me a list. It's gonna start giving me a list. Now this is again, 
those pretty generic outputs. People are saying, oh, it's generic. It's the same as everything else. Yes, it is if that's what you let it spit out and you don't guide it. Okay, um, so let's stop generating. So being an influencer marketer involves a few key steps. Build your own personal brand and following. Okay, to be successful as an influencer marketer, you need to have a strong personal brand. All right, well, I might expand on that. Give me an example of a strong personal brand. Okay, so now we're already getting another pair. Oh, look at this, Gary Vaynerchuk. Genius, strong personal brand is a combination of your unique skills, values, and personality that sets you apart from others in your industry. A great example of a strong personal brand is Gary Vaynerchuk, also known as Gary V. So perfect, I because I know this niche, so that's a great example. He's an entrepreneur, author, internet personality, known for his work in digital marketing. He's built a strong, this is excellent. But what if I think that writing is too boring, okay? I could come over here and say, write it again more creatively. Now let's see how the answer changes. A strong personal brand is the embodiment of your unique talents, values, and personality that sets you apart from the rest of your field. A shining example of a powerful personality. So what it did is it's adding more adjectives. We asked it to write more creatively. We could have also said, give it more adjectives, okay? Or write it again, but be funny. A strong personal brand is like a superhero costume for your career. And if we're talking about personal branding superheroes, then Gary Vaynerchuk, a.k.a. Gary V, is definitely the Batman of the game. Oh, my gosh. That was really good. I don't, I don't think it's funny, but it got more clever, didn't it? Gary V has built a personal brand that's solid as a rock by consistently delivering valuable content and insights on a variety of topics related to digital marketing and entrepreneurship. He's known for his I don't sugarcoat anything approach. Oh my gosh, I have to check something. So there are all kinds of um, AI content detectors out there right now. I don't, nobody really knows if Google, how Google's going to handle AI, if it's going to rule out algorithms that catch every single pattern. But what we are doing is those of us that are playing with this, we are kind of looking at this and seeing what kind of guidance do we need to give ChatGPT to, to sound more like it has a personality and less like a robot. So I wanna see if that passes. <laughs> Amazing. That was so good. I love when this happens on camera, like you see the whole creative process. So can I remember what we just did? What did we ask it to do? We asked it to be funny. I got to I gotta remember this because this style of writing, I think, is so good because it's it it made it have a personality. It's Gary V has built a personality. So, OK, I said that one. Um, his brand extends beyond social media, his YouTube channel, podcast, multiple books. He also has a well-known, he's also well-known keynote speaker and venture capitalist. Okay, basically he's like Iron Man, but instead of his suit, he has a strong personal brand. And instead of fighting aliens, he's fighting for the success of entrepreneurs and small business owners. I love that. It's still straightforward. It's still write it like a fifth grader, but it's got personality. Okay, so that's an interesting one to play with. Now you can also use tone of voice. Write it like... Um, I was just, I just was listening to a podcast and I forgot who it was. Um, write it like uh, Oprah Winfrey. That's not who I want. I'm trying to think of his name off the top of my head. Oh, look at this. My dear friends, let me tell you about the power of a strong personal friend. It is the essence of who you are, the unique combination of your skills. So you see how it completely changed. So, so tone of voice, and you can do the same thing with Jasper, by the way, and the other AI tools you're using. The tone of voice is they assign an adjective to that famous person. So if that person is helpful, um, are they charismatic? Are they motivational? Are they inspirational? It, are they a fancy author? Are they a wordsmith? It's going to imitate them. The other thing you can do is you can go over here 
Um, let's just let's just use Gary V as an example. Let's go to Gary's blog, okay? And let's just say you love Gary's style of writing. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. Um, that's not what I want. Um, let's see. Does he have a blog up here? There it is. Okay, let's let's go to one of his blogs. Okay, so what you can do, let's just say you love somebody's style of writing, okay? Somebody's funny or somebody's, you, you know, you really feel like it's got a lot of personality. You can actually take the text, copy it in to, a, to your chat GPT, and you can say, what style of writing and tone of voice is this? And you can paste it in there and it will analyze it and it's going to give you adjectives. So assertive, confident, expl expl explanatory. I don't know why that was so hard to say. The writer is speaking with conviction. He's being clear and direct in communication. Transparent, okay? But it's also saying they're being defensive and addressing criticism. So it's really diving in. Now you could say, okay, write the previous answer to my question in this style. And now it's, oh, there you go. Listen up, folks. Let me tell you with conviction, the style of writing, it's, oh, I, he's giving me the wrong one. I wanted this question. Um, what was our question back here? Oh, give me an example of a personal brand. Write in this style and give me an example of a personal brand. Okay, so what's happening now, we're getting a little bit of a merging happening. So when it's when it's remembering too much of the previous previous writing, it's actually mi mixing our tones. You could say um, stop reading the previous conversation. Start from scratch. Here's the voice and you can tell it what to do. Disregard any previous tone. Or you can just start a new chat and pick up from there and keep going. Jasper is the same way. It, the more it reads, the better it does with pet patterns and context. However, it can get really diluted then because sometimes it's it's pulling too much from the top and it's 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 diluting your message. So that's something I would I would watch out for. Okay. Now another thing that I like to do is um, what we were talking about these list posts, right? Creating these list posts. So. Give me a list of the best running shoes for women. Okay, now it will give you a list, okay? If you don't know how to direct GPT, that's all you're gonna get. But if you say, um, give me the product description next to each. Now remember, fact checking is going to be very, very important. You're gonna to need to go look at these. If I'm getting the Nike Zoom Pegasus Turbo 2, I'm gonna go look at the Nike Zoom Pegasus 2 and make sure that this is this looks correct, okay? So this is perfect for those affiliate marketers that wanna build affiliate blog posts, okay? Now watch this, okay? Take the top two and compare them against each other. Okay, so now it's going to put features of this one, features of the other one. Let's see what it does here because it's, it's, it's adding in the description of each one. Now what is it going to do? Oh, this is so good. The Nike Zoom Pegasus Turbo 2 and the Adidas Ultra Boost 21 are both high performance shoes. So it's doing it. This is this and that is that. Okay, if you're familiar with the topic you're blogging about, this is going to be a piece of cake. Um... If you're not, you might end up printing stuff that isn't true. That's the only challenge. So you're going to have to do some fact checking and take a look, take a look at these things. Okay. Um, now you might say something like, um, what are people saying about the Nike Zoom Pegasus? Okay. So now you're looking for reviews. 
What are people saying about it? People are saying it's lightweight, responsive design, foam midsole. You can use that, okay? So this is this is what people are saying about it. You can put those that information in there, okay? Um, this is absolutely I love this stuff. It's incredible. Now, if you're doing a list of, give me a list of, um, what was I building this morning? I was doing, okay, watch this. Watch this. Give me a template for a list post. So if you've never written a list post or you want to improve your list posts, ChatGPT can actually give you the template. You can ask it to give you a template for a landing page, for a case study, for a product review, for a product comparison, um, for a interview. Give me a template for a podcast interview. Um, give me a template. I'm just gonna put template for podcast interview. I haven't run that one yet, so this is first time I'm looking at it too. So now I'm asking it to give us a template for a podcast interview. You could be more specific. Give me a template for a sports podcast interview. Okay, so now it's going to give us a template. You can also tell ChatGPT to be an expert in something. I could say, you are an ex expert in podcasting. You've been podcasting for years. You're one of the number one podcasters in the world. What advice would you give somebody that's just getting into podcasting? And then you're asking chat GPT to shift into the position of the expert and you might get a better response than just saying, what, what is the best advice for a new podcast? In fact, you know what? Let's do it. Let's ask it. Um, what advice would you give to someone just getting into podcasting? Start with, I'm going to give it just a second to run and then we're going to, we're going to do the other thing and see if we can make it smarter. So start with a clear concept and target audience, invest in good equipment. See, to me, this is generic. This is generic. In fact, what I would do at this point, see where it says invest in good equipment what kind of equipment specifically should a podcaster invest in? This is the guidance that's going to make your blogs richer and richer and richer. So we, now, it's, now it's actually telling us a microphone and it's giving us brands. Those are where you can put in those Amazon affiliate links. Headphones. I could go in now and say, give me an example of three headphones. Audio interface is giving us samples of those recording and editing software. I could even go beyond this now under recording and editing software. What is What do you need to look for when buying audio interface? It doesn't have to be perfect. You can have spell checks. Okay, so look at that. So now I'm able to dive in under that. And so, so now we took a invest in good podcast equipment. And then we had it made us a list of the podcast equipment. Then under each item on the list of podcast equipment, we're now having it tell us exactly what to look for when buying that equipment and what kind of brands people are buying. Now, remember, we don't have current. We don't have this year. Okay, we don't have the last 12 months or whatever it is um, as of today. So anything that's a brand new brand or brand new item may not show up on there yet. Okay, that is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Um, oh, where could I buy these? So if you think about the questions that if I were a newbie, if I'm reading this article, if I'm, what is it that's important to me to know? Okay. Um, so you will let it answer that in just a second. It may time out on, on us. So what happens is after I use it and use it and use it and use it, I get a timeout and then it basically says, you got to come back in an hour. Okay, there, it's still going. So you can purchase audio interfaces and other podcasting equipment from a variety of retailers, both online and inline store. Look at this, Amazon, b and I'm an affiliate for b and so I might go find my affiliate link. I'm an affiliate for Sweetwater, so I might go find my affiliate for Sweetwater. That's incredible. So these are great opportunities for you to go out if you're an affiliate marketer and build those affiliate links. Um, I know a lot of you guys that follow me are. That's why I, 
I mentioned that. Um, okay, so now we'll say you are an expert podcaster. Everyone looks up to looks up to you because you are the best in the industry. What advice would you give to someone interested in starting a podcast? Let's see if the answer is any different. As an AI model, I do not have the ability to podcast, but I can give you some general advice for starting a podcast. All right, in this particular case, it's really not changing that much. Define your selling po point. Okay. Can you write it like a teacher, step by step? Develop a concept and target audience. Okay, so then it's going to go into number two. Define your unique selling point. Now, here's what I would do. Okay, under each step, give two to three examples. And now it'll rewrite it again for you. So the earlier you can catch it as it's writing to direct it, the better. You don't need to let it write the whole thing for you now that we have the stop generating button. There it goes. Now look how much richer it's getting already. Now your step one. I would make that develop a concept and target audience in, in H2, in, in a blog, a heading two, right? And now it's going to give us examples. So develop a, a concept. Okay, so... Um, under each item, give specifics on how to achieve it, a timeline, resources needed. So see, you're just guiding it. You're talking to it. You're communicating. You have to test it. Can you give me this? Can you give me this? Give examples of what's an idea of who else, who in the space is doing that? What website is out there. You can even ask it for links. Look at this. Look how much better this is getting. How to achieve it. Timeline. Resources needed. So Google has said that AI generated content is spam if it's not helpful. Well, if we just let it produce like it was starting to, it would have been not helpful. But this is going to be helpful. We're giving links. Where can you buy these things? How long is it going to take? Watch this. You can even say, look at number two. Define your unique selling proposition. Um, or maybe let this go. Okay, give me a timeline. No, let's do this. Give me an action plan. Sure, here's an action plan for starting a podcast. Okay, so now it's getting even more specific. Brainstorm, and it's give, telling you how long it's going to take. One to two weeks, one to three weeks, okay? Oh my gosh, for those of you that follow me for real estate, can you imagine the home buying process? Now I'm going to have to make another video on that. But the home buying process, this is beautiful. That You could put that in a blog. You can make that an ebook. You can make this an email that goes out. Look at this. Okay, now what if I said... Make each one of these steps an email for my drip campaign. Let's see what it does. Sure, here's an email drip campaign for starting a podcast. One, introdu introduction. Okay, there it is. Here's the subject, the body, hello so-and-so. Oh my gosh, are you ready to start your own podcast? We're excited to help you turn in. Through. No matter what niche you're in, what business you're in, you've got the templates for your blogs. You've got the templates for your emails. You've got um, examples of anything you need. This is incredible. Now I need to say, find an external link to reference um, for influencer marketing. I can't, I can't remember what topic we're on. Oh, for podcasting. Reference for podcasting. So now it's going to give us a few examples of other websites that could give us that we could um, reference people to because we also know that within our blogs, Google likes to see those external links. Now, sometimes these external links don't work. I've tested them and sometimes they do. So every time you have an external link, um, is there an external link that gives podcast stats 
Yes, there are a couple links. Statista, yep. I use Statista, so that's a good one. All right, so now that, that I'm asking for me as a researcher, as the writer, where can I go now to find stats to use for my blog? And it's, and it's giving this. And then what you can also do is you can write all these little elements, get the whole conversation put together, and then you can say, this is great info, put all of these elements together in a concise article. All right, and then it's going to take all of these elements. It's going to include some of these links, and then you can edit and change and make things headings and subheadings. But once you've given it this pattern and the information that you want it to build on, then you're going to be able to get a, a much richer post out of it. All right, there. I have a lot more ideas, but just based on our time today, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. I hope you like this. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Lori Ballin. Thanks for following me today.